Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Attorneys um, review for Westworld uh, Season 4, Episode 2, Well Enough Alone. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Westworld. So I have to start with the spoiler warning for Westworld up to Season 4, Episode 2. If you have not seen this episode, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, some things will be spoiled for you. Although... To be fair, I don't know how much will be spoiled for you since I don't have any idea <laughs> what the hell is going on. Well, I guess I have an idea. Uh, I have some theories. And there is some of it I follow that what's going on. Now, I'm going to reiterate what I said last week that I feel very disconnected um, from for having that, that eight-year gap in between seasons. Uh, because um, Caleb and Maeve are this, this close pair with this rich backstory, yet we don't know what that is. And so we didn't really see these two characters together that much, not until the very end of season three. And they didn't really team up until like the very final scene. Uh, basically, I, I have a, it's just this Caleb seems like a totally different character who I don't really know. Because Caleb was a completely different character who teamed up with Dolores and his whole thing was Rehoboam. He didn't really have much to do with Delos of the host. And they kind of ditched the whole Rehoboam storyline because they kind of defeated him in season, in Ciroc in season three. So now it's back to the hosts and all that. And uh, as far as I've seen on screen, he hasn't actually had much experience with that, as far as I remember. So, I don't know. I, I just feel very disconnected from it. Now, I do wonder if they're kind of hinting at that perhaps he died in between seasons. And maybe this is a host Caleb or some shit. Because, because we get Maeve when she had these, when she was had all these memories. They have a memory of them like blowing up this Rehoboam room thing. And they talked about it too in this episode, The Lighthouse, they said. Um, and um, in this episode, he says that she's, you know, that she saved his life. But... Is that really what happened? Uh, did, did she really save his life? Or did she save his life by putting his consciousness into a host? <laughs> I don't know if Maeve would have the ability to do this. But I don't know. I'm just throwing shit out there. <laughs> um, I just... I don't know. I feel very disconnected from the story. So if they would find a way, a reason to why we needed the eight year gap. And, and maybe it's going to create more of a mystery that they'll a big reveal coming later to justify it then it might make me feel better about it and maybe that's why i'm reaching for one i don't know i don't know what's going on um so i feel disconnected from the whole show because most of like all the characters in like season one or two were died <laughs> pretty much or moved to the subline and uh and there's only a few left in the se from season three and we just get different versions or of the same characters like the new william and or like they've reconstructed clementine in this episode so i don't know and it, it feels very disconjointed from the rest of the series, but maybe this will improve as the season goes on. I'm not sure. However, the one sort of anchor uh, is that at the end of season three, they were setting up for Haloris or, or Charlotte Hell, if you want to call her. Um... It's not really Charlotte Hale, it's the host impersonating her, it's Dolores' consciousness, but whatever. That's why I like Haloris. But anyway, she was basically, she's gone a different path than the Dolores, because Dolores decided to help humanity and help them get over Rehoboam and defeat Ciroc, whereas uh, Haloris didn't really have anything to do with that and didn't want to do that anymore. It was actually, towards the end of the season, it became Dolores's adversary and her goal was to more of um get straight up revenge on humanity and and as we see here she's trying to control them 
trying to conquer them, basically. Um, and that was one of the more interesting aspects of Season 3, because where Dolores could have gone in several directions depending on her experiences and the, the fact that she split her personality into like six different people uh, those different versions of her did change depending on the personal experiences and that's why I really liked Holoris' storyline in season 3 because it showed how she ended up going in a totally different direction now Dolores is dead but Holoris is still here now, the, um, I've heard other videos and other things say definitively, yes, Dolores died at the end of Season 3, but that version of Dolores died. If I recall, I can't remember which one, but there was still, because at this, you know, in between Season 2 and 3, she split herself into like five or six different versions, and there was still one version that was still at large as of the end of season three. So there's still a version of Dolores out there. Now, whether or not we're ever going to meet that version, or if it is in fact Christina, uh, I don't know if they'll ever reveal that or if we'll ever see that. Or maybe they're just going to write it off as if, or have that version of her die off screen or something. I don't know. To me, it would be more interesting if Christina was this version, but I feel like they might go in a different direction. And one of the behind the scenes things, they even referred to Christina as human, which to me would make no sense. And so the story would have to work extremely hard to justify that statement. I heard the theory out there that this is in fact taking place in the past. Um, and uh, this is uh, this woman of Christina was a real life human being that uh, Ford based the character of uh, Dolores off of which to me that theory doesn't track because a lot of weird shit is happening <laughs> in this Christina storyline uh, so I don't think that she's a real life human being in a real life setting something is definitely real way off with her because you know, this guy was saying that that he was like, stop controlling me, you're controlling my life, you're going to make me commit suicide. And then she goes back and reads one of her stories, and it's about the, the guy with the same name, and the exact, his way his life played out is exactly how she wrote it. And then there's an obituary saying he donated all this money to this psychiatric center, and then she goes there, and the psychiatric center had been shut down for decades, and his name was like on a plaque, uh, rather than the fact that he just died. And the people who are talking to her are, like, really weird. Like, the boss, the way he calls, is like, oh, you're traveling. Oh, see, that's not, he's not acting like a normal way a normal boss would act. There's something weird and up with him. Like, I think he knows more than she does of, of their reality and who she really is. Um, I definitely get that impression. And also her friend. The way her friend was talking was kind of trying to be like, oh, don't worry about it, it's fine, don't worry, it's fine, just come back here and I'll give you hugs, we'll be fine. Uh, so, <laughs> so I get the impression that she knows more and is just trying to push her away from uncovering the Matrix or whatnot. Um, and, and so the theory is that, and some of the scenes in the trailers apparently support this theory, that this version of New York is a park. And so there's, so my, I don't really know how that would work though. My theory is that if it's a park, is it set in, is this set in the future? Because this is what to the show would be modern day New York. But so is this taking place like a hundred years later and they recreated a park of what to them would be olden times New York. Um, but that's, again, not supported by the trailer because there was a shot of Caleb walking around the city with all the hosts frozen, which is why they think that New York City is a part. And plus, in the previous episode, we had those three random guys walking around saying, oh, have you been here before? Oh, this is so amazing, which certainly implies a park. In fact, at the end of this episode, when Caleb and Maeve were going on the train, I half expected them to show up in this version of New York. Um... 
So I don't really get. To me, it would make more sense. Uh, I still haven't let go of my theory that perhaps this is a sublime. I just get the feeling that this Christina storyline is completely separate from everything else that's going on in the store and in the show. Either it's the sublime or it's um, like set in a future timeline. However, the fact that again the shot of Caleb in the trailer walking through this environment kind of sh shoots down both those days unless Caleb is at this point a host and he's visiting the sublime or has managed to or, or a version of Caleb that exists in the distant future but that's kind of stretching it isn't it it says more likely this is present day uh, and it is just another park but I don't know, something to that doesn't track to me, or it doesn't sound interesting. It's almost like I wish they would go in a different direction than that. But if they do, they could justify it. I don't know. Anyway, let's talk more about, uh, you see, Bull from The Expanse shows up, and apparently he got promoted to uh, vice president, so he used to be, you know, just running a security on the belter station out in the belt in the distant future and now apparently travel back in time as the vice president <laughs> i love the expanse i'm sorry and he um gets killed by william and replaced by a um a host of him which is clearly what happened and then they there's this other asshole dude who i recognize as actor playing assholes in other various movies i can't think of what at the moment but anyway um he's uh you know do, you know they're trying to investigate them from the government and they they put those flies in them so the flies are clearly like these artificial ai flies that we because we see them being created in the intro and they use them to mind control people somehow and it was very eerie the way Hale showed up and was like, I put her in the barn with the other livestock. So really emphasizing how the her plan to use her species, if you prefer, her <laughs> race of hosts to treat humanity the way humanity would treat lower forms of uh, animals, uh, prime, you know, livestock or, or whatnot, which is fucking scary the way human beings create, <laughs> treat other animals. Uh, so it's, it's, it's scary to think of a, a robotic race treating humanity that way. Uh, but clearly that's her goal, and we get that scene with her controlling uh, the real William, who in, is in fact not dead, which is interesting, they slit his throat, but I buy that they found ways to keep him alive so that they could torment him and, and freeze him. Um, I don't know if we'll see more of him, but um, yeah, the point is we got host William uh, as kind of Dolores' or Holores' <laughs> new uh, henchman. Uh, which I, which I do find interesting. And so the point, the government, I didn't want them to set up a park in U.S. soil. They are like, you can take that shit off the coast. It's fine. Don't do it here. But they wanted to do it anyway. So they just killed the government officials and took over the government. There's apparently, according to the dude from Heroes, there's uh, 249 um, hosts that have already infiltrated something most likely mostly the government that you one would presume but it could be all facets of society um and we see caleb and the mave enter a park and there's a lot of very obvious callback visual callbacks to the first two seasons blah blah uh and they enter the park that's the roaring 20s now it's implied by william's big intro to the park is that they created something better so to me that implies this is not an exact replica of the 20s that they tweaked it and made it different or better and somehow and not really going by history and creating like a, a different society um 
But how is that related to Christina's story? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. And I'm not sure how... I'm kind of... You know, part of the reason why I love Season 3 so much is because it got away from, like, all these parks. I'm kind of lost interest in that, to be honest. But, you know, I suppose all those people who hated Season 3... <sighs> wanted them to return to this idea of having all these parks so I guess they're happy I'm me personally I could kind of do without it and want more of the cyberpunk feel that season 3 had but you know I'm not sleeping on season 4 yet um, it is still intriguing me and it still could go in some very interesting directions We'll see. I'm, I'm just very. There are definitely a lot of mysteries <laughs> that they're setting up for. So it's also very dependent on how they resolve them, uh, what the payoff is, that sort of thing. But overall, like the one thing I can definitely cling on to is Haloris is the main villain who's trying to take over the human race. Like anyway, that they made that clear. That's what the stakes were going to be this season. Uh, at the end of season three so they're delivering on that promise and it is very clear but all the rest of the details are a bit fuzzy <laughs> so um so yes i'm still very interested in that and as i said they really do an amazing job of building Haloris's character and her different motivations now we just need a, more of a counterpoint other than maybe we need I actually want a Dolores back, but I don't know if this Christine will be or is. Oh, uh, Christina. Um, but we still have Bernard. And when Bernard appears, I have, well, like, they're going to pretty much have to confirm, like, what the sublime is and what is not. So my theory of the New York being the sublime could be proven wrong in the next episode um, because if you saw the trailer for the next episode it implies that we see Bernard after he returned now at the end of season 3 so he went into the sublime and he comes out there's dust all over him but 8 years have passed so that's probably enough time to justify there being dust all over him so uh, this so he could emerge from the sublime in what we would know as the present day of this story if there is a, even is a person day of this story, da, 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 maybe it's all taking place in different time periods. Ah, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm still really interested, really curious, uh, and hooked to see where the season will take. Uh, so my rating for Well Enough Alone uh, out of ten is an eight. Extremely good. Still interested. Still setting up, uh, laying all the bricks and setting up all the story in interesting ways and still curious to see where this is going. So that's it for my review of Westworld Season 4 Episode 2. I shall return next week and every week thereafter to continue to cover Westworld as well as I cover other shows on my channel. Uh, like Star Trek Strange New Worlds, in fact all things Star Trek and other shows like The Expanse. Um, Star Wars Rebels and more so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that and thanks a lot for watching.